Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you that we can come together today in your name. You promised that you'll be with us when we do it. And we acknowledge your presence here. Lord, that your Holy Spirit ministering to each one of us as we, Lord, open our hearts to your word to quicken it and giving us the ability to receive it, understand it, Lord, and appropriate, Lord, the things make ours the things that you promised. Lord, we just thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, that uh, is not by our own works, but by your love and, Lord, uh, trusting in you, that uh, that releases and manifests your dynamis, your power working in us and transforming us, empowering us to do the things that you're calling us to do, Lord. And we praise you in advance for the things you're going to do even today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, well, we, you know, Lilian before mentioned about we are wonderfully made. And that's true. We're going to get more into the fact that we are God's creation. And we have to understand what that means and how that works in us so that we participate we allow him to do it because he won't do it in any other way that us receiving by faith that means not going by the circumstances or the or the senses or the physical things around us but by our spirit praise the lord so we're going to see really that this is not new it's been there that way all the time from the very beginning okay now if we don't experience that if we don't really see it that manifested in our life then we have to do something differently from the things we did before because doing the same thing you can't expect to get any different results we had to expect that uh, there has to be a change in our behavior and in our position to be able to do that. And this is up to us, and everybody is capable of doing that. But they have to understand the part that they have. Okay. Last week, we just mentioned some things okay, about you know, some steps, some positions, some beliefs. See, everything that we get from God starts with our beliefs. And if we don't understand that, then we try to get him to do something. And it's never going to happen. We need to start believing before we receive it, before we see it manifested. Okay? And it's our part to allow then uh, ourselves to take that place, that position. I always use that word. And I'm not just, you know, in the word itself, the Bible itself, repeat that many, many times in the New Testament. And we have to understand that we have to change the way we think. Because in the Old Testament, unless they did what I'm talking about now, they did not receive. But the people that did that, even if they were operating in the law, they forgot the law. And they start believing God's promises. David was very clear about that. You know, it's not how good we are. If you're trying to be good, to get anywhere, you're going to be stuck right where you are and you're not going to get anywhere. Because your goodness are dirty rags for God. Okay. I mean, understanding that and applying that to yourself, 
you get free from religion, free from all the bondages, because you start seeing God's power working in you. Okay, but that take that step. Take the step of giving up to be good, to do the right thing. Instead, to be connected with him, to trust him beyond your understanding, to trust God with all your heart. And that's where the problem comes in. Because there are lots of things we want, but... Um, you know, we always have some uh, residual component of unbelief inside us. And it's not like, you know, unbelief cannot be cast out. It's not a demon. Unbelief is what you let there and is the flesh. It's the things you go by the senses that you have, by the external things, the, what you see, what you hear, what you feel, all those things that have to do with your senses that keep you there where they, you are today. And you have to break law, loose from that. To be, receive, okay, you have to be open to See that uh, there are the change of position, and when you change that position, you are going to hear different things. Instead of hearing condemnation, instead of hearing to be put down, you feel what God feels for you, which is love. No matter what a mess you are today. If you don't believe that, you're never going to get anywhere. Because you're trying to do it yourself. You try to deserve it. You start to gain it. You start to buy it. You cannot buy with gold, silver, or even any action that you do, any sacrifice. God prefers obedience to sacrifice. Just trust him and believe him. You know, this is such a basic thing. But believe it, Christians, call, people call themselves Christians, come short, most of them, from that. And they try to do it, and they get nowhere. Praise the Lord. So we want to deal with that. And the way, you know, I want to just remind you of some of the things I said about last week, because these are so important. There is a part that God has done and the part that you had to do. And the part that you had to do is not the good works. It's not trying to earn it. It's not trying to be right. It's not, you know, actually that's really one of the major problems. Well, well, the thing you have to do is to trust that is for you in your side because when you do that, his power is going to be manifested in you and you are going to do. You know, it's not your works or your deeds. We shared that on Thursday night on, um, on Zoom as well. And uh, the two things go together uh, this time, what I'm doing on Thursday. And um, if you weren't there on Thursday, you really missed something. Because uh, that was really important to be able to get anywhere. But I'm going to just remind you what I said last week here. Okay. You know, your position is a position of faith that has to be there. You must believe something. Believe something, not just something in general, but something that God says in his word concerning you. And that implies me and everybody else, okay? And, okay, and realize what he has done already that you don't have to do anything about. The only thing you have to do is believe that he has done that already, that his position is there for himself as well, and that uh, you take, that means take by faith in your heart, what he has given you. And uh, you just take, and then it's to God to, to actually manifest it. 
You cannot manifest anything spiritually. It's God's power working in you that brings about the changes even in the physical dimension, in your behavior, in your body, in your healing, in your deliverance. You know, he forgives, you know, Psalm 103, you know, he forgives, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. I mean, that's a benefit that you get as you bless the Lord for the things that he has done. Forgives all your iniquities. Heal your, all your diseases. Redeem your life from destruction. See, the stuff that passed is past. He's building it up. You renew your life like the ego. I mean, just the ego every 40 years, just it's like renewed, starting from scratch. I'm going to go to watch into the detail you want to do. So you start there. You start trusting the Lord. Start believing God's intention to save everybody, including you. And I mean save means healing, deliverance, do everything. You know, that's his job, not ours. He wants to bless us, bless you by forgiving your iniquities. So, agree with him. Believe that you receive as you bring them before you. Okay, okay. So, God loves you. Okay. That's the first thing that you have to keep repeating to yourself. He is in my sight. God loves me. Let's say it together. God loves me. Number one. Okay. Then you understand that uh, he's just not in just a theory that he's talking about. It's a practical thing. It's really applied to you. And to be able to do that means you have to be conscious of what he does for you. And to be conscious, you, everything that you are in consciousness works through words. If you don't think words, you don't think about anything. There is nothing there. Your thoughts are words. And God gave us the thought for us to have. And the thought that for us to have in our mind, is his word. So he has given us, all right, that's his part, it's done, it's there. You actually today, you know, before, in the Old Testament, it was very difficult for some people to have words because it was very difficult to have a scroll. Very few people had it. They had to go to the synagogue or whatever. Today, everybody has a Bible, at least, if he's a believer, maybe more different translations that reflect different uh, understanding, but everybody has it. And this is God's gift to us. So, you know, what we have to do is to trust that the word, that the Bible is God speaking to us. Now, there is so much evidence for that to be the case that I'm not going to even, you know, try to touch that topic. If you're really interested, you want to know more about that, let me know. I'll send you a PDF file on, with, the, with the, the talking about that. That, you know, the Bible is the Word of God speaking to you now. Okay. So, you know, know that and understand that to be connected with God, because God is a, just a, a general idea, you have to be connected with uh, Co to be connected consciously, you have to be connected with his word. The word of God is the connection that you establish with God. So when you go to the word, you is like you are plugging in the electricity or the power of God home to you because it's going to be bringing revelation to you. And that revelation is God speaking to you. You know, you're not just thought that are within your mind. They had to get deep into your heart. And this is where you want. That's why you had to dwell in it. That meant you had to think about it. You had to ponder on it. You had to apply to yourself. You had to allow that to work inside you so that it's going, the power that is in the word of God, because God does everything through his word. He spoke the universe into existence. 
He spoke the people. He spoke the animal. He spoke everything, the physical. And so you had to do the same. You had to allow the word to work in you, and you had to speak it in your life. That's the second thing. Third thing, Jesus, the God, okay, you had to believe that God sent Jesus. I mean, that Jesus was the son of God that uh, became, you know, in the world to teach us and to show us the Father. It enabled us to become children of God, like he was, so that we can imitate it. So, you know, uh, we had to do that. We had to respond to that. Okay, that means we had to respond to what he taught, what he showed us, and so the way, you know, we had to trust him. Our trust, as we trust God, we had to trust in what Jesus did. And one of the things that to get through our hard head that we had difficult time doing is that his job is finished. Is the finished work on the cross. It's everything done that needed to be done, and there is nothing else that needs to be done. Whatever we do, that we think we had to do, we are taking his place, and we are not going to be blessed. Are you following me? There are so many people that uh, they think they had to pray that much, they had to go to church, they had to do all these things, they had to go witnessing around, they had to do that way you don't get saved. You do those things because you are saved. You don't get good points with God doing those things. That's just only the manifestation of something that changed inside you. But when you are motivated to do those things, to stand up and to be able to be good enough, you are losing ground. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You get, you go under the law. You go back in the Old Testament. If you go back in the Old Testament, you are not going to get anywhere. It is unfortunately Many do. Unfortunately, many people keep preaching from an Old Testament perspective, not even understanding that even the way we pray is different. If you are believers, are you following me? So, you know, when, uh, you know, we had our sin, okay, Jesus died for us, it's done, it's finished. He said, it is finished. And that's it. And that thing, everything that he needed to do for us was done. Now he intercedes for us to the Father, but it's a completely different story. Okay. So the idea is that we had to align ourselves with that. So if we had done things in the past and whatever, you know, we just go before him and we believe. You see, we had to have faith again. It's not that we had to be there, you know, repenting 10,000 times. That means the all the, 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 the two, you know, 9,000, things, the times that we did before, we didn't believe. Because if we didn't believe, we were felt, feel that we are saved, that we are, for, they are forgiven. If you don't feel you are forgiven, then you are not exercising your faith about believing God. So that's, Really the problem. But for most people, they had to go and do the same thing hundreds of times. Okay? You cannot receive from God if you are in unbelief. And that is simply unbelief. You believe that you had to do something. You see, you had to earn. It's not the earning. It's not the fact that, you know, it's just that you take this new position and you let it go in the past. See, repenting is not, oh, you know, uh, Repenting is simply you turn around. Don't have to be there, bowling away for forgiveness. He did it. And you have to be instead grateful and thankful for what he has done for you. That's a completely different attitude. But if you are grateful, that means you're receiving. Because you cannot be grateful if you, if you haven't got it. 
Hello? So if you are there asking it all the time, you are never grateful. Because you, you thought that you didn't do enough. Are you following me? So you deep only to the, okay, that's it. It's gone. It's finished. I'm free. That's faith. That you cannot receive anything from God without faith. So you have to have faith. That means believe what the word says. Okay. Second, you know, finally. So as a result of that, okay, since he did it for you personally, okay, and we can read all the scripture, but we're going to go through that. Took our sicknesses, you know, took our, our, your, um, your uh, sins, took everything else. So you don't have this anymore. He gave him what he had in himself because he took all the junk that was inside you on himself and he gave you what he had inside himself, which is righteousness. So one of the things that you had to start believing and accepting that you are the righteousness of God in him. That means you have to be in him, but the fact that, uh, you know, when you are in him, then you are the righteousness of God. That means, you know, your sins are gone. Okay. You have to remain in him. That means you have to keep aligning yourself with him. You keep standing there. But the fact is that you now, there is nothing separated in you from God. Because if there is something that separates you from God, what he did wasn't good enough. And that's what you're saying. That actually, you know, what he did was not good enough for you because you are a special case. You are. You put yourself there. All right? Are you still with me? Remain in Christ and realize your new identity in him. You are a child of God. You are connected with God. You are, there is righteousness. That means there is no separation. You are in good standing before God. You can go before God. And he is your daddy. Finally, you know, it's not enough. See, up to before Pentecost, or actually before he was resurrected, God was up there, and you were down here. Nobody in the Old Testament had the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. If the word has changed you that way, now the Holy Spirit is inside you, and he's taking over, if you let him, because he's a gentleman. He is not going to push you around. You know, people say, oh, you know, I have to do this. The Holy Spirit told me that. The Holy Spirit doesn't work that way. He always leaves you the freedom to choose what you do. Because that is what God wants, wants obedience. And obedience is not that you have to do it. He doesn't, that the devil does that. Religious spirit do that. Not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to show you the things that when you do, God is going to be able to bless you even more. So, you know, the idea is that uh, you have to start walking in the Spirit. That means listening to the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you in your steps, okay? And the, generally, you know, it's not any, any silly things that the Holy Spirit has to be talking to you. You know, it's about the things that are important. The things that are going to make a difference in your life. This is God's perfect plan of salvation. It's not just a question of saying a little prayer and everything happens. No. There is all these things that to be all these beliefs, all this faith has to be exercised to, be, to, to see and to have a manifestation of his, your, his power in you to change your life, to transform you. Metamorphosis completely a new thing. What? A new creature. A new creation. And when you say, you know, God created you, I'm talking about that, not what you had before. God doesn't, didn't make you the way you were before. The devil made you. I wasn't like that with Adam. You see? 
Adam was created by God. And he didn't have, he was in a good relationship with God. The Holy Spirit was within him. He, God was in communion with him. He, you know, walked with God in the garden. And he operated in the same way as Jesus operated on earth. He looked after the whole garden of heaven. And we are going to see actual scripture from the, New, from the Old Testament. Showing that exactly. You see. Showing that, that uh, God was operating in Adam, exercising his power and his authority through him, because Adam had delegated authority to work on the garden, work on earth in place of God. And that was consciously, not Are you following me? You know, if it's not conscious, means nothing. Your soul includes your spirit and your, I mean, no, sorry. You, you in, include your, that God created. You're going to, I'm going to, to do, you know, let's, let's take a step back in a moment. We're going to get there in a minute. Okay. The Holy Spirit guides us into our freedom. Now, okay. As we believe, what God speaks to us, and we act on it, then are going to happen, results are going to take place. Okay? We are going to see the transformation that takes place. And when we take steps, okay, the transformation, you know, we are not going to be on the same place all the time. If you are at the same place all the time, we are not listening. Because we had to, life is not static. Life is always producing something. If there is a life in a child, it keeps growing. And stop growing, and, and you know, maybe physically for a number of years, but that should be growing spiritually for the rest of his life. That's what God's plan is. But if we are not growing, we are regressing. That's the way life is. You know, if you don't move and you don't do, you know, your body atrophizes. If you spiritually do nothing, then your spirit atrophizes. And we need to grow in that. And the way we up is happening, you know, the way it works is really explained very clearly in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, For by grace you have been saved. Okay, and this is not, you know, this is a progressive thing. Salvation is not an instantaneous thing. Salvation is something that goes on until you go with the Lord. Or it should be anyway. Okay, salvation through faith. So, you know, you have been by grace, you are saved through faith. Grace is nothing else than the gift to come from God. Okay, and that gift is to save you because that is intention. The way he said it the first time, God is for you. But if you don't take it, nothing is going to happen. So what you need is faith, because faith, believing, means use the word faith, is pistis, which actually means to believe. Okay, faith, pistis, you know, has to, what it does is take, lambano, the word use, receive the things that God's giving you. You know, I can be there giving you something. If you don't take it, you don't get it. But if you take it, it's yours. And this is the way it works with God. Okay. It says there, you know, and that is not of yourself. It's not that you do anything. If you do something to, to get it, you lose it. The only thing you have to do is to believe. And stop all unbelief. Because belief has always two components. Component is believe. What God says, the other component is believe what everybody says that is not agree, or even what your senses tell you that uh, doesn't agree with the word of God. If the word of God says you are forgiven and you go by the feeling you have and you don't feel that you are agree, then you are not believing and you are not exercising your faith. If you are sick and you ask God to heal you, he said, you know, by Jesus' stripes you were healed, past tense, and you don't 
or you to be there say, thank you, Lord, I receive it, I take it, you said it, I believe it. And then it's to God to make that happen as your unbelief goes away. Are you still with me? It says, not a work, it is the gift of God. Not a work, least, lest anyone should boast. You cannot boast about anything. You can be, you must be grateful for everything he has done because it's all his job, not yours. The only job, the only part you have is to believe, to have faith, to take that position of, yes, I believe your word. And I'm standing there and I kick off any other thought in my, from my mind. Okay. We cannot save ourselves. We had to align ourselves spiritually with what the word of God says. That's the position we had to take. Okay. Our dependence, our what we rely on is has to be God in everything. Okay. No self, no what you do, no you're self-centered. That doesn't get you anywhere. This is really was said even in the Old Testament, and some people understood, like, you know. Moses and David and other people that were operating in by faith, you know, they understood that. Okay. Proverbs 3, 5 says very clearly, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your way, you know, allow him to direct your path in this way. So the, the idea is uh, that thought, that idea was also already communicated by God in the Old Testament. For us, it should be even clearer because uh, it's expanded and Jesus demonstrated that. And uh, the other, you know, the, the other epistle, I go, you know, but Jesus operated that all the time when he was on earth. His miracles were nothing else that produced, not because he was God, but because he functioned as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit which is said in Acts 10.38. God was with him. And so Holy Spirit was operating through him. Okay. And he said it himself. Very clearly in John chapter 5, verse 30, he said, I can do nothing in myself. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because you know, judgment is righteous. Righteous means, you know, uh, the fact that it's in alignment with God is, is fine with it before God. Okay. Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. So that's exactly the way we are called to operate. That's the best options we have, for, even for anything in our life. Okay. So that's the position of the new man, the man, the man that is being created in Christ Jesus, as we receive him. You know, in continuing on Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 that I read before, but I'm going to read now, you know, now, you know, now you are his, his workmanship. Okay. That means his masterpiece. Don't tell me that the world, people in the world are his masterpiece. Look around what's going on. That's the garbage compare. Okay. So, his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. So, you see, with the, the way he created us, his masterpiece is that we go around doing exact, you know, because we have been transformed. We are not anymore the same. We are metamorphosized into something different than we were before. And that is somebody that is operating the way Jesus will function, the way that God wants. Obey is not just there following the laws and uh, the commandments and everything else. You just, it's much more than what God meant. Okay, so. This is the reason why his workmanship means that we are the perfect work of God. Even in the degree that we have been created by God. No, by our parents. Hello? 
Now, there is a translation that I actually use on Thursday night. And I am repeating this because this is so important that we I want to get it across. You know, and if you don't get it, you're not going to get anywhere in your Christian walk. Okay. In uh, the Williams translation of the Bible says, said the same thing. You are his work, my shame. Instead of, you know, it says, he has made us what we are. Okay. Because he has created us through our union with Christ Jesus. See, we are united in one because we have aligned ourselves with him, with what he said for us. Okay. For doing good deeds, which he beforehand planned for us to do. So he's saying the same thing, but in a way that is much more transparent for us to understand that he just didn't create like that. He created in, uh, to the degree that we are in union with Christ, that we are in Christ. In union with Christ doesn't mean, you know, I'm a Christian. No, that we align up our judgment, our thinking, our ideas with what were his judgment and his ideas. Uh, to the degree that we are conscious, you know, lots of, and the, the only thing we can do is according to the things that we are conscious, the things that we don't, are not conscious about, we have to still work on. And you're going to find out after that uh, you continue changing all the time and becoming more and more like Jesus. Okay, that's called sanctification. But you see, the work that we do, the work there and deeds there in the other case, okay, the word is the same, ergon, which actually means acts, actions, works, and so on and so on. But there are, you know, there is a distinction. There are dead works and, go and good works. The dead works is the one we do for selfish reasons. Like, for example, to feel good. I'm going to, you know, help this person that is in hardship. Or to, I'm going to pray so that God is going to do something for me. I'm going to do these things. That stuff is dead works. and doesn't get you anywhere. Okay. Are resulting from your, yourself. Okay. That's not going to work spiritually. Try to feel good or get God's approval. Then there are the good works that are actually the natural outcome of the change that you are, or who you are. That you are not even thinking, and after you're done, you're really not thinking about anything, because that's the only thing you could do. Okay. That one is the, that, that you are as a result of it. So, you know, the new man is created in Christ Jesus. So when we, you know, we have to understand that when God created Adam. That's why he, how he created him. See, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 says, Then God said, Let make man in our own image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the, the bird of the air, and so on and so forth. So, so, following verse 27, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. So number one, male and female are the same here. Do I have to repeat it again? Because some people don't understand. Okay, so God created them, in a, you know, first of all, God is, was not a physical being was a spiritual being. The likeness of man to God was not physical. The word there in likeness and, 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 and uh, image, you know, had to do with uh, a part of us that is the same as God, which includes our soul and our spirit. Okay. When God breathed the breath of, breath of life into Adam, that means his life into Adam, then he became a living soul. That means he acquired a soul that was conscious of what's going on in the spirit. There was a connection there between his soul and his spirit so that he actually knew what was going on in the spirit and the feelings and the emotions and the will were all lined up with his spirit. 
In fact, he was in communion with the Father, and he walked in the garden and talked to him. He didn't need to work to look after the garden. Nice. Everything was coming out of uh, his mouth. His soul was speaking it into existence, and everything would take place. Because he had complete communion with the Father. And God had, you see, the communion with the Father was, you know, the fact that he had dominion over all these other things. Dominion wasn't Adam. Authority was God's authority delegated to Adam. Are you following me? So he was exercising God's authority over things, and he didn't need to do anything. He called all the things by name. So that means, you know, that he gave name to things. That means he was consciously identifying all the things that he was facing. I mean, that was a pretty good mind, wouldn't you say? But that also indicated the power that he had, the ability, the, the supernatural, God-like authority that he had. He had dominion, and he repeated so many times, because God wants us to get it. Amen. We need to get what he has done for us. And when we are created in him, we have dominion. Because that's what plan is. That's what happens when we exercise faith. That's the result of our faith that uh, give, uh, give us power to achieve things in the physical, the way Adam was able to do and the way God did before when he created these things. Are you still with me? You see, that's the Im Im image. The image is the dominion that we have in our spirit and our soul, uh, in Adam, sorry, you know, that yet. And all that power, all that dominion finished the moment when he separated himself from God because that was coming from God. And the enemy took advantage of it and he took over it. Some of it, anyway. Are you following me? So, you know, at the beginning, God blessed them, you know, and says again, you know, be fruitful, multiply, we fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion, verse 28, over the fish, and it's the put again, I guess, the same story. Okay, there was this conscious ability of Adam to control the physical world around him. The same ability, the same thing, was also in Jesus. Operating just like Adam. In fact, it's called the second Adam in the Bible. See, he didn't have sin, so he could function and operate according to the power of God delegated through in him as the new creation. Are you following me? Okay. The very moment when Adam disobeyed God and God separated from God, the balance within his soul and his spirit changed. He got separ his spirit got separated, died, because we're not anymore the life of God in him. His soul remained, and his soul was influenced by the body, by the senses, by the physical environment around him. And he was subjected to that. And he, that's the curse that come in him because he disobeyed, separated himself from God. So the result of that is what happens, the old man was created. The way it's called in the New, in the New Testament, Paul and so on talked about the old man. The old man is the sinful man, the, the man separated from God that does not have the power of God working in him and has to do everything according to the senses, according to the world around him, according to the thought that comes from the world around him. That's what we are born in as a result of being the children of Adam. 
But that's not what God's plan is, because he wants to save us from that condition from the very beginning. He promised to send the Messiah to be able to do all the time. He was trying to minister to us and to, to relate to us in such a way that we can understand more and more. And when the time was ready for us to be able to receive, he sent Jesus. And even then, to start with, not that many followed, including the people that uh, supposedly knew God. Why? Because they were religious. Because they were going according to the law. Because they didn't have the experience of trusting and faith in God. They had to do things to gain acceptance from God. We are accepted in the beloved. That's what the Bible says. In Jesus, in Christ, he works in us. Are you still with me? Praise the Lord. Okay, the old man is the fallen man. Doesn't have the life of God. He's not created by God, but he's created according to the result of sin. Okay, and, you know, that is so evident in the Bible. He's corrupted, not very good. At the beginning, you know, everything that God did was very good. Now, it was a real mess. Look at the world around today. That's the result of that. It has been always that way. The new man is created in Christ Jesus. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Everybody knows the scripture, but the way I'm talking now, you should be able to understand it better. It says, then if anyone, if anyone is in Christ, that means has lined up himself, or to the degree that one has lined up himself, because in the conscious, you have... Uh, you know, your conscious mind, you cannot align yourself with God more than what you consciously know. Make sense? If what you don't know, you cannot align yourself. You cannot change the way you are thinking, your judgment, and so on. So, you know, to the degree that you are in Christ, to the degree that you consciously know there are things to do and you have decided to be do that way, you know, he is a new creator. So you see, that's the new creation, the new man coming up, okay? All things have passed away, behold, all things have become new in that area. Now all things are, that are in Christ are of God, who reconciled to himself us through Christ Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation so that we can go and tell people, look, you can be reconciled with God. The only thing you have to do is to accept, line up yourself with Jesus. Praise the Lord. See, faith is involved here about being able to have that life, that perfect, that work, work being without workmanship. And the faith is to believe that what uh, you know God has done for you according to his word in the area that you know his word. And you, in that case, should start manifesting dominion over the circumstances, over your behavior, over... The old world. All things are possible to them that believe that Jesus said many times. Okay, so. Now, this is all over the New Testament. And that wasn't so clear, so explained, so plain in, 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 in the Old Testament. Okay, it says, you know, blessed is the man, the, the sons, his, his sins are forgiven. Yeah, that didn't say very much more. Why? Because there was no understanding at that time, no matter who they were. It's sometimes by experience they did it. Took, you know, Abraham 40 years to line up himself to the point that he could have a son. When instead, you know, the process would be much faster if he would have understood better. But we're going to go into that later. Actually, on Thursday, uh, I started to talk about that. Now, let me read from you, okay? The new man has to have a certain position. A certain sp position is a spiritual standing, a spiritual belief about himself and everything else. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 says, If then, so that's the condition, all right? Okay, you were... Raised with Christ, so raised with Christ means you're, you're born again, okay? Means that, you know, you are in Christ now. 
Before you were dead, now you are raised. You are alive, spiritually. Okay? If you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. So if the condition here is to be born again, in that case you are raised with Christ, you know, and the miracle is t- t- taking place because uh, of your faith, believing in what Jesus has done, is going to be manifested in uh, your behavior, your position, the way you see yourself. You don't see yourself as a sinner saved by grace. You can see, see yourself as the righteousness of God because God has made you righteous, not because you can boast about it. Not because you do all the things that the Bible says that you should do. See, it's faith that makes us accepted by God, not what we do. Now, if you have faith, then you're going to do the right thing. Naturally, because that is who you are. This is how the new man is manifested. So, continue on that, the following verse, it says, you know, why do you do that? Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. So you must, see, again, as a question of consciousness. You have to set your mind on the things of God. And how do you know the thing, of, the thing of God is the word? So unless you know the word, you can set anything. You just go by the feeling. The feeling is, oh, you know, I'm making today. Oh, you know, I, did, you know, the, 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 the law says, you know, not to do this, and I did it. Uh, well, I'm sorry. You're already condemning yourself. Okay. So, set all your mind on the things above, not on the things on earth. Following verse, for you died. You see, before you were alive in the world. Now you die in the world like Jesus did. Okay. For your life is hidden in Christ in God, with Christ in God. So now it's what happened. The new man doesn't go by facts or by feelings, by thinking what's going on, by your senses. He goes by what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, I am righteous in God, in Him. I am righteous. I believe in Him, good standing with God. I can go before and can expect that He answer my prayer. Okay. We acquire back, okay, become conscious okay, of uh, what God wants, we understand, because the word makes us understand, we understand the word, and so we know the way we should feel, the way we should, our attitude and our choices, okay? Our conscious life is critical to be able to walk with God. That means we have to know inside what's going on inside ourselves. Consciousness is the area in which we operate. And that consciousness is given by the awareness that the Word of God gives to us about what is right and what is wrong. We saw it before, I don't know if dear on Thursday, you know, but we, by the, the, the reason of experience, our reason of doing it, we learn what is right and what is wrong. So, this is, you know, unless you are starting to live consciously, you cannot live a spiritual life. The word says, you know, that we should wake up from slumber. Okay, the people in the world go according to the way they feel and are like zombies. We are not zombies. We are people with a mind that God has given us. We have the mind of Christ and we operate the way the word says consciously and with determination, remaining in that position even when our senses tell otherwise. Because we don't give in and believe, we give in to the word. We believe the word. That was controlling us. That was controlling God, you know, Adam at the beginning because he was in communion with God. And God was directing him. Now, as a new man, we are in communion with the Word of God that is given to us to give us consciousness of what is right and what is wrong, and we walk by it. And we are, you know, not constantly 
we monitor ourselves if you are walking in the flesh or if you are walking in the spirit. If we go by the senses or what we go by our heart and what the word says that we should do. Okay. And so we have to be cautious, conscious of what's going on inside ourselves to see who is operating in us, the old man or the new man. Because we have multiple personality. We are two people inside. The old man and the new man. Not inventing it, Paul said that. And so what we had to do, see, become so much clearer. How are we thinking according to the new man's idea? Which is really what the word of God says we should feel or see. See, we look at the word and we see ourselves the way we should be. Then we stop looking and we fall back into the old man and do the old things. And so that's because the word is not being really effective in our heart yet. Are you still with me? Now, you know, the fact is not that difficult to do that. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 20, it says something that uh, there, okay, verse 19. For the work of the flesh, we see what come out of the flesh are the works of the flesh, the deeds of the flesh, okay, are evident. So are pretty clear, it's not that it's just a big mystery about it, okay, are pretty evident which other adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lewdness, you know, and all these other things, idolatry, sorcery, and make a long list. And if you want, you can memorize it just to make sure that uh, you know all the messes that these things produce. But the idea is simple. Okay, now we consciously can identify when we fall. You know, when we are jealous, when we are other things, you know, a burst of wrath, you know, selfish ambition, the division, heresies and stuff like that. Heresy is somebody that goes, you know, different than the word of God says. Are you following me? These are, you know, and it, it goes on, that verse 23, and I skip some things here, no, that, uh, uh, of which, you know, going on about doing these things, I tell you beforehand, I, I tell you before, beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we are not going to be the manifestation, the supernatural manifestation of God's power in your life to enable to do things that Jesus did or that uh, God wants you to do. If you do those things, you are not going to be, you are separated from God. God has not given you the power and the authority. See, the kingdom of God is the place in which God's dominion is manifested. Jesus preached about the kingdom of God all the time, and he demonstrated by the things he was doing. Now you can see why I said Jesus had this, the characteristics of Adam, you know, because he was the second Adam, because he was operating and had dominion over the world. He would say, you know, tempest, stop, and then stop. You know, uh, leprosy, go and touch the leper. You know, he didn't get sick. He was healing the leper. Are you with me yet? Praise the Lord. See the, the wonderful things. Okay, so we have to, as soon as we realize that we are in those things, okay, we know that we are not going to manifest communion with God. We are not going to be in communion with God. We are going to be just creating problems for ourselves and others. Okay, what we have to do instead is, you know, don't learn not to go by past spiritual experience even because they can be messed up. Okay? We have to go today so that we don't want to follow, are not manifested, the works of the flesh, but, uh, you know, us allowing the Spirit of God to be in us, we have life, the life of God, and peace. And that is what happens when we walk in the Spirit. So I'm going to finish with this scripture, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, see, generally they all work together, is love, peace, Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is 
no law. So when we are moving in that direction, we are not going to break any law. We are going to do exactly what God wants us to do, and we are blessed. So we are going to, because we are, why? We are aligned with the Spirit of God, with the life of God inside us. And the life of God is going to manifest in us, and is going to be manifest in the kingdom as well. The following verse, and those who are in Christ Jesus, you know, is what they're going to manifest. They have crucified the flesh with his passion and desire. And if we live according to the Spirit, let's walk according to the Spirit. That's the way we're going to do it. Have you been following me? See, that's not complicated. We have to learn to stay in the Word, allow the Word to grow in us so that we are conscious of it, and it takes over our thinking, not the physical circumstances we are in, not the past experiences we have, not what people says, not what the news in t TV says, not what anything that you see even physically, but what the Word says. And you believe it, and you reject, deal with any unbelief inside you that wants to make you believe those things of the flesh. And you are going to manifest the kingdom. That's the beginning. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I mean, that's a pretty good thing, seems to me, that we can experience. See, that's the position we take. Set your mind on things above, not on things. Look at the word. Don't look at the physical. And we are going to pray together. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father for what you have done for us, that we now know what we should do, that we, with our mind, with our soul, with our will, thank you that we know that we can do it and make a difference in our life and the lives of those around us. Thank you that you give us power and dominion over our circumstances and the circumstances around us. Thank you that we know that you are a good father, that you love us, that you have made everything that was needed to guide us, to give us power, to give us victory over our circumstances, to give us power to overcome sin, sickness, weakness, ignorance, poverty, everything that is not of you. And we can live in the kingdom today, even before we come before you. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you.